Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, want to invite everybody to join us on Patreon. Again, exclusive videos go up there several times a week. It's a wonderful community. Uh, just amazing people over there. And we are also on uh, Rumble, Brighty and Bitshoot as well. And Ko-Fi is, is how we um do everything when it comes to uh any sort of energy work vedic astrology charts it links to our paypal um and again all the info for anybody looking to make a uh an appointment and you know well how much does a vedic chart entail or energy work or what have you just spiritual coaching everything is all the info is on every single video so just scroll down and you'll see all the details right there so we had a speech by the president of the U.S. yesterday. Yeah, we did. And, you know, as you see this post from David Icke, this really says a lot. This really says a lot. I mean, I don't know how you can't notice. You, how could you not notice this to everybody watching Netanyahu's speech to Congress? Now you know who really controls the United States and owns your... Uh, politicians it, it's really really true and in fact listen just listen just listen to the words just uh, I mean I don't know if they do this to others what what uh, well just listen to the term members of Congress I now have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you his excellency Benjamin Netanyahu his excellency I, I mean is he royalty when you listen to that choice of words and you know there's something that's been hitting me that you know as somebody that's read the bible studied the bible since he was really five uh, on my own since about 11 when you look at where is the center of events in the quote-unquote uh, tribulation period, the quote-unquote end times, etc. It is centered around Israel, of course. Of course, it's Israel-centric. Everything about it is about Israel. But when you look at Ezekiel 38, you know, Gog Magog, you know, I, I again view all these things as parts of the script, which are ever-flowing, ever-changing. But if it is their intention to go very much literally by that book, um, and by what's written down there, then you would expect Israel to grow in power uh, and, in fact, to take the center stage on the whole planet. And it's so interesting that here we have the U.S. Just listen again how, how the Speaker of the House announces him. Members of Congress, I now have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you His Excellency, Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah, so the restructuring, because we are in a period of restructuring right now. It's, it's pretty obvious to everybody. There's major changes. All this that they're building up to is, is part of a restructuring and a shift. Again, we understand that uh, there's one global order behind all this that it would love to take away uh, the illusion of that division to a degree they love to have everything unified and simplified to a degree at this point in time because again it's all about combating the awakening that is happening and staying ahead of the awakening of humans on the planet so you know it does feel like there's all sorts of shifting sands beneath our feet when it comes to timelines mm -hmm. um, yeah I, I think so too and it's <sighs> I think it's kind of dramatic, you know, right now. It's it, those sands that are shifting, they're becoming more and more and more. I think we have some fairly large events coming up, and uh, it's just, you know, you got to kind of watch and see. Yeah, and, you know, if anybody has a devilish grin, it's, it's this person right here. And part of his speech, he was talking about U.S. and Israel should create a Middle East NATO. Uh, yes, an alliance there in the Middle East. It's interesting. Again, I go back to, um, and if Peter's listening, Peter in Poland, uh, you know, curious to see what the Polish psychic has been picking up on. Because he, he did pick up that 
2028, four years from now, there will be um, Middle Eastern countries that no longer exist. And I thought that was really interesting. The countries will be gone. They won't even be on the map anymore. They will be taken over. And he said Israel would, would vastly be larger in size. Well, yeah, in, in, in some ways that would actually make a lot of sense. Uh, a lot of sense. I think there's these different timelines, different possibilities again that they have there. And it all depends on how quickly humans wake up how quickly humans catch on and you know they just simply roll from a to b to c to d uh, accordingly so maybe in the timeline that we are on right now at this point in time is one in which you see uh, israel gain a lot of influence and power and literally you know they're stoking the fires to have the bigger war against iran as Cindy was picking up on, they have technology that nobody else has. Uh, nobody else has. And that technology is able to trigger um, Earth-related events that may look natural, but are actually technology. Well, what, what's really scary about it is um, it's, <laughs> it's technology that is controlled by their God, their, their God. You know, when they talk about God in the Bible, um, this is alien technology. This is an alien entity, and it's very powerful technology, and they have access to it. And that's the thing that really worries me. And people are going to, you know, bow to them in a way more out of fear than anything. Um this technology is something I cannot wrap my head around. I do not understand it, but I definitely feel it. And I feel those who feel and understand the power that's within it. And, you know, it's respected in the sense where you don't want to mess around with it. So uh, then we have we have that to deal with right now. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> So this was his fourth address to American lawmakers, beating out Winston Churchill's record, although about 70 House and Senate members declined to attend for one reason or another. Um, I would be curious to see who those are. Um, you know, again, some people do uh, have a little bit more backbone. Some people do stick up for what they feel is, is right. And other people are just nudged along again with the, the system. So going back to uh, the other speech by the other president of the U.S. here, uh, Joe Biden, lots of people picking up on lots of things. You know, for one, to me, his head didn't seem as long. I mean, there was something different about his head. Uh, Cindy noted the eyes weren't black. The eyes were blue, like the original. Um, but people are pointing out like the time was wrong. So this was obviously a taped message that they let go at a certain time. By the way, 45's uh, campaign is in four media outlets. They're going to be hearing from his lawyers for violating the equal time rule because it basically amounted to nothing but a campaign speech for Kamala. Um, you know, when I when I hear things like it, it just it, it can make you so nauseous to like hear him say uh, violent crime is way down. Has he looked? Uh, no. I mean, again, they could state things and they do. Uh, state things that are so wrong. <laughs> I mean, just wrong. Not even remotely close to the facts as a truth. And unfortunately, still the the, the gullible uh, people out there will fall right for it. And a lot of it simply is again, it's programming. You know, I I was brought up in a democratic household. Our, our family voted Democrat all the time, but being from Connecticut, that was, you know, kind of the majority. Um, my father and mother broke rank with Reagan. Uh, that was the first time they got caught up in, in his hoopla, and that was the first time that they went the other way. Um, but, you know, again, <laughs> I would tell my mom, it's all an illusion. She'd say, well, I don't know. That's, that would be her patented answer. Well, I don't know. You know, again, I don't know. Why don't we just trust the experts? That is the, good people do this, really good people. I think of my mom as, as somebody that was, you know, by today's standards, almost a saint. Uh, I mean, the woman never got angry, really, you know, until she got a little bit older, a little bit cranky at times. But we all get cranky when we're in, you know, constant pain and 90 years old. Um, but for the whole... 
No, um, you know, a wonderful, wonderful person. And we look at the generations that pass, and I feel very blessed uh, to have been the youngest kid amongst my family with a lot of older relatives that were very, very old and actually were born on, you know, in the 1890s. So I had people to talk to about the past past, and I was an avid historian even as a little kid. And I would, you know, pick their brains. Tell me what it was like in the Depression. You know, how was it? I mean, actually, they, they said it was wonderful because there was a sense of togetherness that we just lost. Uh, and, and it's sad because everything has disintegrated before our very eyes. Again, as a kid uh, born in the 60s, growing up in the 70s and 80s, um, yeah, we had a lot more uh, togetherness than we do now. But this disintegration of, of the family unit it has been completely planned and he knows and yet he's given these patented speeches and and who is this really we don't know who that is really we really don't know you know is it a a face mask is it a clone is it a robot it could be one of elon's robots that's been programmed i mean we don't even know and as this person more people are picking up on the fact that, you know, hey, you can't tell me this isn't a deep fake. Where's his reading ring? What's up with his hands? You know, now this has gone mainstream to the part um, where people are, are finally uh, not going to just blindly walk off the cliff necessarily. Uh, but still, there's multiple cliffs. And they got that angle covered too. So, you know, you can go and, and keep pointing over here, but watch out, there, there's there's a pit ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, some of the things that he was talking about being violent crime at a, you know, 50% low, 50% less, uh, when, when we've seen what's going on across the country over and over again, uh, fixing big pharma is as long as they're making pills and treating with chemicals and uh, shipping it all from China. It's really heavy metal laden. Um, there's no fixing there. And then he was, you know, I don't know. He was slurring a little bit. I think he was saying uh, he wants the cancer shot, you know, that that thing. And and uh, we all know where that's going to go. Um and then stating that the U.S. is not at war anywhere, anywhere at all, in any way, shape, or form. So, uh, just a lot well, of things that we'll he. For a time when we're not. Yeah, I mean, he's just stating a lot of things that um, really don't feel right. No, uh, it, it's completely uh, a travesty that the world is is nothing like what the politicians speak of. And here you have Elon clapping because Elon was there for Netanyahu, of course, because, you know, ultimately, you look at everything that Elon's about, SpaceX, you know, Twitter X, um, you know, we have Tesla, which, by the way, is going to be mass producing humanoid robots starting next year. Why? Well, because there's going to be a need for them. When you look at what's been done already, we don't know what that world is going to look like because of what's been done already. So, you know, those are more of the deep dives that we go in on Patreon exclusives where we talk very bluntly and blankly. Um, it, it, there's been so much done right now. It's just a matter of watching and waiting. And they know this. They know this. This is why they have those numbers out there with these agendas tied to these numbers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, the only person I see that has been consistently accurate the entire time for the last, you know, two and a half, th three decades is, is David Icke, honestly. And yeah, they follow him. And, and nothing could be clearer because, you know, what it looks like right now, if you guys caught the video on Pence's uh, chart, yeah, absolutely. It, we would expect to see a shift to the other side the pendulum is going to swing hard to the other way and you're going to have perhaps a period of rampant nationalism well rampant nationalism is what's led to uh you know global wars as well now you know they they say one thing and do another but what you have here is a whole generation of what we would call kids you know um younger people 
that are blindly following Elon, mostly because, you know, he's such a goofy, uh, apparently fun loving nerd that is really easy for them to relate to in some ways. Not that they're billionaires like him, but just that he he doesn't feel like a politician. So he feels like a viable alternative to put your faith in and trust in. And, you know, when you look at the stats of our channel, um, besides a couple of, of amazing people, there's very few people under 25 that follow us. And I think uh, the younger generation, correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, I could very well be wrong because we don't hang out, out, with, out with a lot of kids. We, we really just hang with each other pretty much. Um, you know, I, how many of them are so into the tech that it's almost too late to pry the, the joysticks out of their hands or the keyboards away from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I think there's some out there, but they are very rare. Um, it's just something that we gonna ha- we're going to have to work with. You know, we need to change things, and we'll have to change things with the tools that we have, and we might not have... The, you know the age range that we need right now but i have full faith that as people wake up things will get better and better well we see the barriers were up and you know maybe the barriers were you know not as much uh for biden as they were for the fact that netanyahu was coming to town and there was a massive massive uh, anti netanyahu protests with burning refugees burning flags they they pulled down three us flags uh, burned them and replaced them with palestinian flags um, yeah it was it was pretty crazy uh, it was pretty wild a lot of heated uh, passion and yet you know things things march on uh, it, it's a crazy time. And then you had several House Republicans, including Speaker Mike Johnson, replace the three American flags that were torn down and burned by the pro-Palestinian uh, protesters. So, you know, here we go again with this. It, it's all leading, of course, this leads to a greater police state. Meanwhile, when you look over in Ireland, uh, this says Ireland cities and towns are dying. The EU's self-obsessed visions of equality for a tiny minority have abandoned working communities to desolation and collapse. So they're walking through Dublin City, a uh, place that's now a shadow of its former self. But I want to give to you that the more time I've looked at this, the, the more things gnaw at me. The more I think uh, this is really uh, is nothing new. And even the level, let's look at this like ocean waves. You know, we've been in a period, especially since the end of World War II to to the present to like, say, 2017 of relative calm seas. You know, relative in in the bigger scheme of the world, that was that period, that chunk, most of my life, you know, um, absolutely was tranquil. And it was purposely tranquil because they have these ebbs and flows. Now, it depends on where you're at because, you know, again, the earth is a, is a fairly large place, relatively speaking, compared to our neighborhood, certainly whatever neighborhood that is. But all my life, I've seen empty buildings in places. I've always visited different towns here and there that seem to be almost abandoned. And it doesn't take much in a small town to have one major uh, you know, business go under. And all of a sudden, what was a population boom and people coming in, then people leave. And then it's almost like a ghost town. There's a lot of ghost towns around this planet, a ton of ghost towns, you know, Rhyolite. <laughs> we've, we've been in ghost towns ourselves, and, and there are still ghosts that walk the streets of these towns. What's happening in, in Ireland right now, as, as the locals are pushing back more, uh, they're literally um, setting torch to uh, housing uh, that's intended for uh, the immigrants coming in. This is a nonstop program. This is a nonstop program is what's going on. It just ebb and flows like the ocean. <clears throat> this never stops. If you have ever looked at genetics, and, and I'm somebody, again, that has been fascinated from the get-go um, with 
tribal migrations with one one group of people why are they here but then you got a little pocket of them you know over on the other side of the globe this makes no sense at all you know there's a lot that makes no sense at all but i think the scope is almost beyond belief for most people to understand just how big this is this i don't think it ever stops i mean i remember as a little boy listening to my my aunt uh, Etta, uh, who was again born, I want to say Etta was born in like 1890, uh, complaining about the fact that there were nothing but immigrants in the town that she was living in. And this is back in the 60s and the 70s, early 70s. She died, I believe. Uh, be, I don't think she, uh, maybe she died around 1980 or so. Um, yeah, at that point in time, she was complaining because of all the migration. The migration is always ongoing. And you would say, well, people are just always looking for a better opportunity. Well, the world, there's a time period when, when the world didn't operate this way because people were able to root because there was such an abundance. And people were able to build amazing things and have amazing architecture because they weren't just struggling to live like we are now. Uh, this is another interesting little uh, Twitter channel, uh, Dystopia Now. You know, he thinks that with that millennial kingdom of Christ already happened. And, and there are people that say, you know, a thousand years uh, was added or a thousand years was taken away. When you look to the program that's in place there's a lot of architecture that doesn't seem to make sense especially what they use as the cover stories for the architecture we think of um, north america and i've had people say to me there was no genocide of 100 million uh native americans there wasn't 100 million native americans in 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 north and south america combined you know in in years past uh, I think that's really sorely uh, misunderstood. No, the, the populations were bigger than what, what we are told, way bigger, and they, they just disappeared. And, and when you look to this, this is St. Louis, Missouri. A lot of these structures are not even there anymore. And you know what, what is the cover story for this? Well, we're going to talk about that, but what I want to point out is look at this architecture. It's amazing. Look at the gargoyles. Look at how little the people are. These are grand buildings. These, this is gorgeous. This is beautiful. This is like a, amazing works of art. Is it just a theater set and it's all cardboard and styrofoam? I don't think so. Look at it. It looks like Valkyries up here. And it's just you would swear we're over in in uh, Nuremberg or, or maybe we're in Rome, you know, Greece. This is St. Louis. This is St. Louis. St. Louis? Yes, St. Louis. This is 1904. As you see, you know, these people going on by. <clears throat> when you start looking at the lack of population in huge, gigantically uh, developed cities with grand architecture, I mean, beautiful architecture, attention to detail, we don't see today. And without like the sterility uh, that we see in, in today's uh, structures, this, you know, here you go. This is St. Louis too, And it's got a castle. Now, is this really truly what they say it was? And because they have a cover story to cover all this, as you see, it was it was the World's Fair. And I remember growing up um, you know, as a kid, I remember my my parents, my aunts, my uncles, all the elders talking about these great world's fairs that were just so amazing. So St. Louis, 1904, every world's fair was a display of Tartaria, according to his opinion, before it was swept away. Ritualistic act at the beginning of the day, like the Olympics opening ceremonies or bohemian cremation of care. It's about programming the universe with intention. It's alchemy. Oh, there's a lot of alchemy that goes on. In fact, this right here is um, talking all about it. A crowd gathers for the opening day of the St. Louis World's Fair, April 30th, 1904. 
why don't we do things on this type of scale anymore? We have these dark, twisted uh, ceremonies at, at the Olympics, at uh, the opening of CERN, at, at Super Bowl half times. Uh, you know, they're they're the, they're the darkest of all. Why don't we do things that are so you know grandiose anymore? If we can, uh, it's it's curious, is it not? Or is this simply a cover story? Because this is you know a running cover story, and there's other cover stories too. I'm going to give it to Cindy as I go through some of these photos for you guys to look at and share what you feel feeling into all this. Mm-hmm. You know, the the architecture, of course, is the number one thing that sticks out. And the way people carried themselves, the heart chakra is much stronger. The solar plexus is much stronger. There is a pride in humanity. There is an understanding that these people carry. There is an integrity to this energy that I see and feel. Uh, People walking with purpose people walking with focus, uh, people walking with pride. And I think all of these things are because they were given this information about where they are from, who they really are. So they take a lot of pride in what they do. It makes a difference how they dress and go out and show themselves in public. It makes a difference how they compose themselves in front of other people. The, the structure that these uh, people have, the structure just in their energy bodies is way different than what we have now. Most people's energy bodies is in a huge, huge, huge uh, cha- chaotic um, <laughs> tube. And, and th- there's just so much chaos to it. And that's part of what we do. We, we uh, fix that chaos and we bring order to it. Well, these folks, their energy fields, that's to me, that's the most surprising thing. Their energy fields are not chaotic like we see here. So what what is going on? Really, what's the real information that they are utilizing? You know, why have they structured this so tightly? Why are some... Now, this one, though, did bother me. I didn't like the way the indigenous were dressed up this way. This does not feel right. This feels uh, stiff and it feels fake. So there are some things about it that I didn't like... But really, people's energy fields just stuck out like a sore thumb. They're different than they are now. Yeah, this to me looks the most contrived I've seen so far, honestly. It, it's that They're not used to handling this like this. They don't know what they're doing. And would they really not know what they're doing? Right. And their they're dresses, they're just, they're just uncomfortable. So that was a little bit odd. But um, you really, you know, the, <laughs> why are they making a poor elephant go down a slide? I, I don't know. Um, you know, and the indigenous people having also a sense of purpose, but I'm, I'm smelling misdirection with the indigenous people. Um, you know, you can't, you really cannot say enough about the architecture here. Where does this come from? Who, who did this? And whoever did it, there is a strong sense of pride and understanding and knowing of what they're doing. So, you know, it's all very, very curious. And all we really have to go on right now is, you know, looking at their energy bodies, looking at things that most people can't see with their two eyes because you were not going to be told the truth. So you can get all the books that you want, um, but whatever's in those books is going to be given from the control system, if anything, if anything. So I think the development of our abilities becomes more and more important if you're really one that's interested in the truth and, and you want to get to the truth, if that's part of your path, some people just aren't there and that's okay. That's no judgment, but I'm one. I like to walk in the truth. I like to understand the truth of things. And gosh, I just cannot get over the structure of the energy bodies. It's so different. You know, and this <clears throat> this makes me think of the Mad Hatters. Yeah. Remember? Uh, because these top hats were so uh, popular, and yet they were using chemicals in them that could induce all sorts of craziness and yeah. dementia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, go figure. What's, what's about that? Is this time when uh, things are just starting to turn, when they're just starting to manipulate, when they're just starting to... 
um, do things to the public to like see what zoo. happens. It does look like a human zoo. Yeah, it, it, it feels like a human zoo. It feels like they're trying to tell you what the history is um, in order to uh, implant that in, in people's minds. This is a plantation exhibit. Before earlier, we had an exhibit of Siam. I remember Siam, uh, which is now Thailand. This is, again, where the nonstop wars are, are truly, uh, they're beyond stupid, uh, except for the fact that this is actually part of how they wipe away the old history and, and, and rewrite the history because you know countries are not the same uh, and they're always changing. As we've shared with Russia, you know, originally it was a group of tribes, the Kievan Rus. Kiev is Ukraine, and, and then Rus for Russia, which again, it, it was um, a combination of Slovakian, uh, or what we would call uh, Slovak peoples, along with what we would call uh, Nordic peoples intermingling. But, you know, again, these are tribes, and these are tribal in the sense that there have been these uh, redos all throughout history where small pockets of people survive and then come out and then you know again it starts to bloom into another civilization which ends up uh, being swept away you know this is just is this something that is a method and means for creating a fake history an illusion of history uh and also explaining some of the magnificent buildings you know when we look at so many especially the churches when you look at the churches you find such attention to detail and originally the churches in many cases were not intended for worship they were uh, being used for other things perhaps pulling uh, the life force out of the ether and using it as an energy source. Well, we look at this Gothic architecture. Again, the Goths, the Visigoths, these were tribes. Uh, it's just amazing. Tribal people creating things like this? <laughs> you know, the, art, the artistic expression here is just in, in, incredible. And I, I, just, I just don't think that our history is even remotely accurate. Not even remotely. I think that we are in a period of nonstop, constant resets. The resets never stop. They never stop. They just ebb and flow. And then certain areas uh, on the earth will have a, a more severe reset at certain times than others. There's a reason why they don't want you buying property in the Western United States. 85% of Nevada is never going to be for sale because it's owned by the government and and similar to that in, in Wyoming I think part of it is because you know they hide uh, evidence of, of the reset we've wandered through many a desert and seen many a thing that looks to us like could be giant bodies uh, and also places where where technology were this, there, there is a huge reason why they don't want you in, in the Western United States. You know, not, I'm not talking about the big cities in California or Seattle or Portland, but just in general, they don't want people roaming through some of these areas. And again, they didn't want people understanding what was left over in Iraq or in Syria in uh, Afghanistan that's why there's always the wars there that's the number one reason for the wars this is um, Michael Tellinger and I like the way he he does this because he starts way down the path just to give you perspective and this reminded me so much of just so many walks that Cindy and I have had through desert areas and then all of a sudden you know y you come to a spot and you stumble on something and what do we have here? We have a perfect foot, a perfect foot that is four feet long. And it's, it's a foot that's not wearing a shoe. So what does that tell you? And, and he goes in detail too, saying how the mud is pushed uh, up off that big toe exactly like it, uh, you would if you're walking through uh, at that point in time, you know, a muddy area. 
the way it displaced it. This is not a carving. This is not uh, anything like that. No, somebody made that imprint. And if their foot is four feet long, they're probably 25 to 30 feet tall. <laughs> I mean, gosh, when you do the math, that is crazy. I, I don't know how a 25 foot, 30 foot tall being would be supported at the oxygen level that tells me that the etheric nature of things had to have been way different. And that's something else that we got too, that our, our atmosphere is artificially um, devoid of, of oxygen. And we have less oxygen right now than we do in other ages because the system is, is controlling the oxygen levels in order to keep us dumb and sickly. It is. And, you know, oxygen is so very important. If you think about it, it's it's the one thing that animates us when we come into this world. And it's the one thing we let go when we leave this world. Oxygen is so very important. And I, I feel strongly that it's one of the things that could really help people reverse aging. There's a lot of studies on it, just breathing the oxygen to help with cancer. You know, EWOT exercise with oxygen therapy. Um, that's something that been a lot of studies and people have really been able to turn their lives around just by breathing in oxygen. You know, you get a oxygen concentrator and they have these big bags and, and it is a little bit cumbersome, but it depends on, you know, what you want to do or what you need to do with your health. If you're really trying to turn your health around, then that no longer becomes a problem. It becomes a priority and a, and a solution. So, um, not that we trust in Tom DeLong or Peter Lavenda, uh, but when you look at this statement, it says there are two alien forces on the planet struggling with each other for supremacy. One force wishes to keep humanity asleep and unaware. The other force wishes to give humanity knowledge so that it may free itself of the clutches of the planetary forces, the archons or eons, and escape the prison that is Earth. Yes. Um, well, that is all relative to uh, the era or the age. And yes, absolutely, the dark forces are terrified of a new age because, you know, the next age is going to be one where they uh, are exposed. And this is where we are now. It's all being exposed. Yet, I do think that what they want to pose uh, as humanity awakens is that they will show within the control group a dark side and a light side within the control group. That way, we're still picking the control group. This is what, you know, again, they do, and they're very good at it, and they've done it for thousands of years, uh, perhaps 13,000 years, uh, it, perhaps more. You know, again, it, it's something that understanding, our understanding of the universe is given to us from them. And so, you know, we're going to have a very, very distorted understanding of the universe if we just look at their science or their religion because you know they've created both so it's deciphering for ourselves and you know time is relative time is relative it's not a constant oh that's huge uh, it, it, that's that's enormous what a, what a statement that is when we really look at it and understand it and time is totally different in each yuga many people are experiencing the sense that time is not the same as it was before something has massively changed and it continues to change and and uh people are picking up on it more and more and more so um <laughs> well-behaved dog on a holiday trip the what a good boy he probably his his human mommy or daddy bought him his very own seat and that's what i would do for rama and sita if i could if i if i could get sita past some people she she has some, you know, manner issues, but we are working on it. We hope that maybe someday they'll sit nicely like this guy here. <clears throat> well, she does love her Auntie Kay. She, she loves her visits love with Auntie Kay, Kay yeah. and uh, she's very partial to Auntie Kay. Yeah. But yes, absolutely. You know, it, it, we have to look at things from a different perspective, a totally different perspective. And this is part of the uh, growing pains of that, understanding Everything that we've been sold is is actually that. It's sales. It's all sales. And yeah, <laughs> it's very, very painful uh, to look some things that we've held very perhaps dear to us and as part of who we are and realize 
wait a minute, that was never accurate. So then that makes your identity feel at, at threat and it can make people feel very, very uncomfortable and threatened. But we are eternal souls. We are eternal consciousness. We, we cannot be, again, uh, we're, we're not created or destroyed. Now the body, yeah, that's, that's a totally different thing. The body is just a vehicle. It's a vehicle for a temporary experience in this world. And so the real us is behind the scenes, you know, having these experiences. You cannot take anything physically with you, but you can take your experiences and understanding and those things that you learn with you. Indeed. As always, guys, thanks for your support. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.